Welcome along guys. Well today I'm riding a bike which I've not ridden since it was launched. Back in 2016 was the last time I was riding the Yamaha MT10. I've been on this for about 20 minutes just getting a feel for it again and I can tell you it's actually a very very nice bike. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute that's that's bloody beastie. Oh it is. <laughs> Look at it. That's it. The old bike. Beastie. Oh my word. That took me four years or so building this bike. I, I don't know what it's here for. Look at it though. Oh, I'd love to ride it again. I'd love to get on it again. This has got the Moto Gadget keyless ignition system on this and uh, <laughs> when I fitted this I did a little bit of a back door a back door hack so I could probably start this there's a couple of wires under here <laughs> if I push them together yes oh yes I've got to go for it I think just a little very brief very brief little spin maybe is it going to start Bike security is a bit of a hot topic at the moment. So I'm here with Bill from Bike Track and we have fitted a tracker to my old Fireblade project. You may recognise this bike. In this video, we're going to test steal this machine. Bill is going to try and find me and we will see if these systems are actually worthwhile having on your motorcycles. You going to find me, Bill? No problem at all. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> So this is my Fireblade project I had, as I say, about four years ago. I've not ridden this bike since I sold it. I sold this bike three years ago to Bimoto, to Matt at Bimoto, who runs Bimoto. This is like now used as their uh, advertising bike, if you like. They take it to all the shows. Back in the days when you used to better go to, go to a show. But it's their bike. This is why it's covered now in the Bimoto branding. But this is, uh, this is a one-off, this is a special build. The only thing which is standard on this bike and unmolested by me is the radiator. Everything else on this bike is, is modified. I keep wanting to, uh, to use a blipper, but I ain't got a blipper. <laughs> this is old school. This is analog, it's, it's, it's obviously fuel injected. There's no electronic aids, there's no ABS, no traction control. Your traction control is on your end of your arm. The bike's got a power command, and when I had this dynoed, I think it was putting out 157 horsepower. I mean, this is a 2005 Fireblade engine, which I think were around 175 horsepower at the crank when these were uh, when these came out. So it was, you know, back in 2005, that was class leading litre bike power figures. Obviously seems almost middleweight power by today's standard, but 157 horsepower, the back wheel, is all that you need on the road. Go in the corners, it's, it's, it's so much weight over the front. A little bit getting used to that. It's quick, but it's, it's nothing like modern bikes nothing like the power I'd say that feels a little bit slower than the V2 Panigale I think this could maybe do with a bit of a tune no indicators so you're on the hand signals sounds nice sounds lovely I keep touching the indicator button don't do nothing chops leave it alone
I'm actually going to get some fuel for it because the fuel light's on. So I'm going to have to put some petrol in it. Yeah, this, this position is, uh, is ridiculous. Leave it there. 15 quid, it was absolutely dry. Huh? Uh, it's, uh, it's a CB, it's a fire blade, but a bit modified. It's had a few tweaks done to it. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Cheers. Take care, buddy. See you later. Draw some attention, this bike. It draws some attention. Oh, look at it. It does look amazing, doesn't it? Incredible. RCV fairings. So these are the fairings off the Honda RCV race bike, basically. The 2014 RCV fairings in carbon fibre. Custom made tank and tailpiece. Custom made by Steve, my mate who used to work for a composites company, it's since gone bust, so um, we've got all the moulds for those as well. Well, I haven't. <laughs> Matt has. Oh, good, let's not drop the chops, eh? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, the biggest challenge, I guess, doing this by, you know... Oh, red light again. I guess the engine into the frame was the biggest challenge, you know, the most complicated thing, taking that 2005 engine I'm putting it in a 1996 frame. I think there's one other person who had done it before, so I knew it could be done. So I wasn't, I'm not first and only person to do this. I know it has been done, and that's why I decided I would try and do it. I didn't know how it was done, but I knew it was possible. <laughs> I just knew it was possible, so I knew I could find a way. It actually went surprisingly well, and like I say, I've got a full build series of, of me doing this. So if you are interested, have a look. I mean, it's the first videos I ever did on the channel. So it's very rough and ready. And I actually had hair back then as well. <laughs> but have a look. This is what this bike is what built my channel. My channel was built on this bike. You know, the, the whole thing started in the garage doing this, and then when this was completed, I, I rigged up the camera to the helmet and I went for a test ride, and that's where the whole channel and the whole vlogging thing started. And I think it was about eight years ago now it all started. So, I mean, this bike is what started my channel, so this bike will always have a very, very special place in my heart. Oh, it's the, when you get it on the twisty roads, it's like the Panigale. That's when that suspension all starts to work. Pheasant in the road, get out of it. That's when that position starts to work, when you're when you're pushing it a bit. Ah, oh, yes. Just need a blipper <laughs> to finish it off. So if you want to see more about this bike, I have got 27 episodes of a build series on this. 27 episodes. It's on, the, on my website, on the main playlist. I'll put a link at the top somewhere. I've also done a blog for BE Moto all about building this. So look at their website as well and have a read of my blog I've written for them. We're going to be doing a little bit more together, BE Moto and myself. Obviously they're a channel sponsor, so you know they're involved with the channel anyway. So we're going to start doing a little bit more together. And the fact they've got my old bike is just the icing on the cake. So there may be more opportunities for me to ride this again. It is a bit special. It is a bit special. I think for a custom build, I, I really don't think I've done too bad a job on this bike. It changes direction beautifully. I ain't got a clue where I'm going, so I should really be a little bit careful. It's a lot of fun. Love it. It's lovely to be riding it again, I have to say. It's like, it's like going back out again with an old girlfriend. <laughs> That's what I'd, I'd liken it to. You split up with the birds, and then, or an ex or an ex-wife, and then you've been reunited and you've had a little afternoon together. And it's all a little bit weird, but very enjoyable at the same time, revisiting old territory. <laughs> 
it's been a really great experience to ride this bike again do i want it back i don't want it back i don't think i think it's the reasons i got rid of it still stand you know it's, it's nothing else i could do to this bike it's finished you know it's it's got everything done to it I don't have room for a bike just as a showpiece. I've got to have all my bikes have got to be useful, I've got to use them. This could be a track bike, but if I bend it on track, I don't fancy it. You know, that fairing is really irreplaceable. You can buy them now, but it'll be so much work to, to make it all fit again. And then you've got the tail. It, I wouldn't want to risk crashing it on track. So I, I wouldn't want it back again, I don't think. Even though it's been lovely, to ride it today and like revisiting an old girlfriend I wouldn't want it back let me find somewhere to pull over and I'll do a walk around and I'll point out some of the details this bike's got so many things to talk about I'll pull over and I'll talk through some of the details so there we are there it is this is beastie this is my project this is my work for the last four years of building this bike and as I say a few of the details of this RSV swinging arm, uh, RCV MotoGP fairings on this, carbon fibre, CBR 1000 RR engine, uh, <laughs> CBR 900 frame, other details we've got, OZ wheels, forged OZ wheels, and then we've got the custom made carbon fibre tail. Now this was made by my mate Steve, as I mentioned, one off, it's off an RS125, the actual uh, mouldings of this. And then we've got custom subframe for that as well. Same with the tank, custom made tank cover in carbon fibre. RCS, master cylinders, I mean it's got everything. The only thing which is still standard on this bike is the radiator. HM dash with uh, custom laser etching lamb chops rides logo it's, it's it's got i think this bike has got a bit of every single fire blade on it apart from up to about 2012 it's got a bit of all but i need to put some new blade bits on it some bits off the new blade need to go on it the side stand is not even a standard side stand that's off the the 2008 cbr 1000 actually fits the uh, the old frame Rear sets, Aquapovic, exhaust, it's got it all. Hang on a minute. This isn't... Oh, bloody hell. You kind of got me already. By track, 10 worth of experience. How many have McDonald's yet? <laughs> Let's get a happy Bill. <laughs> Unhappy Bill. <laughs> Bill. That was uh, surprisingly quick. I'm quite impressed, I have to say. I've just literally pulled over to do that walk around on the bike and you're already. How does it work? How come you're so quick? Generally, our recoveries are within two hours. So it's, we probably use GPS, so, which gives us real-time location. We can find down to three meters real easily. And that's on GPS, three meters on yeah. GPS, wow. Um, but we also use RF as well. So let's say it was the worst case scenario, maybe a parade of garages, the vans, containers, we use RF as well. So if the police came to location and say, great, which one door are we going to open? Yeah, With see. RF, we can get down to a meter. You can actually pinpoint which garage it's in in a block of, wow, that's 10, quite amazing. 5, 10, yeah, 20, wow. doesn't matter. Okay. So from your point of view though, you get a login. So if I wasn't here just as a, a security tool for yourself yeah. security is generally a boring conversation yeah. so what we want to try and do is make it a bit more interesting so you get a login on your phone you can see where your own bike is it'll show you your battery level wow. records all of your journeys working with bmoto we give their customers three percent the three month subscription three month subscription with bmoto customers and you also get a discount off the, the policy as well so it varies between five and fifteen percent no i'm impressed you've, you've caught me very very quickly so uh and I've actually got a couple of bikes myself. <laughs> I could do with a couple of trackers. We'll have to talk. We'll have a conversation, no problem. Perfect. Thanks so much, Bill. John, John, John. Have you got an Uber account? Uber? Yeah. Well, I'm taking this with me. How are you getting home? Uh, I'll put on some... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> 
So Beastie is back at home where she belongs. To make sure that unsavoury characters like Lamb Chop Rides can't get their hands on her again, she's locked up tight. These are some of the measures you can use to make sure your bikes are as secure as can be. And don't forget, having your very own bill, keep an eye on things.